What's up guys, Dr. Shepard here. Today we are gonna be tackling part two of medication options for the treatment of adult ADHD. If you haven't seen part one, I will link it here. But in part one, I just gave you a general overview and we talked about stimulant medications in particular. Today, we are gonna talk about the other side of the coin, non-stimulant medications that we sometimes use for adult ADHD. As always, this is not medical advice. It's really important to talk with your doctor before starting or stopping any medication. And please know that I'm talking in generalities here. I'm just trying to give you some education on the different options that are available to you. It may or may not apply in your situation. So it's always important to have a conversation with your doctor. Okay, so when we talk about non-stimulant medications for ADHD, we are talking about medications like atomoxetine or Stratera, Wellbutrin or Bupropion, probably the two most common that we see used. So I'm just gonna focus on those two, but there there are some other options. Veloxazine or Kelbury is one of the newer medications. We also sometimes use tricyclic antidepressants, which are an older form of antidepressant medication that we found can be helpful for some people with ADHD. The reason that we don't use tricyclic antidepressants super often is because they can come along with a lot of different potential side effects. So if we can find another option that isn't associated with those side effects, that's usually what we try and go with. Okay, but let's talk about the two most common ones. Atomoxetine or Stratera is the first one. That is something called a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. If it sounds familiar, it's probably because it's essentially a type of antidepressant. There are other antidepressants that work by inhibiting the reuptake of norepinephrine. So research has suggested that atomoxetine can be really helpful for people with ADHD. In general, it doesn't tend to be as effective as the stimulant medications. Not true for everybody, but definitely a possibility. As far as potential side effects, they're gonna be similar side effects that we see with other antidepressants. So here we are talking about things like nausea, diarrhea, constipation, dry mouth, dizziness, trouble sleeping, increased sweating, and problems with sexual functioning. With atomoxetine, as well as any other antidepressant, and actually the stimulants as well, I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, there is an increased risk for someone to develop mania or psychosis when they're taking these medications. This is extremely rare, but the risk is higher in people who have a history of bipolar disorder or people who are at very high risk of bipolar disorder or people who are maybe already on the bipolar spectrum, but we don't realize it yet. Mania and psychosis are extremely rare at the doses that we prescribe, and the risk of mania or psychosis is much higher in people who are abusing the medications. I briefly mentioned Veloxazine or Kelbri a few moments ago, and I'm not gonna go into any more detail about this because it's very similar to atomoxetine in the way that it works and the potential for side effects. It is a newer medication though, and so to be honest, it's not one that I typically prescribe, because being a newer medication, it is still only available as a brand name medication. It's not yet generic, and that can mean that it can be really expensive. There are usually some manufacturer's coupons and other sort of workarounds, but if I can find something that's a little bit more cost-effective that doesn't require all of those workarounds, usually I try and go with that. The other main non-stimulant medication that we use for adult ADHD is one called Bupropion or Wellbutrin. This one is also an antidepressant, but it works a little bit differently from the atomoxid or Stratera that we talked about earlier. Another way that atomoxetine and veloxazine are different from the stimulant medications is that they can take a while to actually start working. Once we get someone to an effective dose of the medication, it can take four to six weeks for them to really feel the full effect. And this is different from stimulants that tend to work pretty quickly, almost right away. Okay, so let's talk about bupropion, also known as Wellbutrin, I mentioned earlier. This is the other non-stimulant medication that we frequently use for ADHD. Also probably sounds familiar because it's a fairly well-known antidepressant. It's got a couple other potential uses too. We sometimes use it to help people stop smoking and it's also a component of one of the newer weight loss drugs to help suppress appetite. So bupropion works a little bit differently from atomoxetine. It's actually a dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. It's got a couple other pharmacological actions that probably play a role too, but the dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition is probably the best known. Again, studies have suggested that on a population level, this medication probably doesn't work as well as stimulant medications in the treatment of ADHD, but that being said, for some people, it can be really, really helpful. It's going to take a little while for this medication to actually kick in, usually four to six weeks after we get to an effective dose. Potential side effects are pretty similar to atomoxetine. It can cause things like dry mouth, dizziness, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, and trouble sleeping. Bupropion is also potentially associated with an increase 
increase risk for seizures. This usually isn't something that I worry about in most patients, but I do worry about it in people who are abusing alcohol and have a high risk for alcohol withdrawal seizures, for people who have eating disorders and may have electrolyte imbalances that make them more likely to have seizures, or for people who have an underlying seizure disorder. It's something that is a bigger risk as the dose increases, so that's something to keep an eye on as well. And last but not least, okay, probably least honestly, because they don't work super well for ADHD and are associated with a lot of potential side effects, but the tricyclic antidepressants are sometimes used for ADHD. The one that's probably best studied for this is nortriptyline. It's an incredibly effective antidepressant. For ADHD, it does seem to have some effect, but it doesn't seem to be as effective as the other non-stimulant options and certainly not as effective as the stimulants. Most people have trouble with things like dry mouth, nausea, dizziness, especially dizziness when they stand up when they're taking a tricyclic antidepressant. We also have to keep a close eye on blood pressure and changes in the heart rhythm. So some more reasons why it's not going to be our first choice in most people. So that's kind of a brief, quick and dirty summary of all the non-stimulant options for ADHD. You probably noticed that I said most of them are antidepressants as well as medications for ADHD. So sometimes we go with these medications in people who are struggling with depression and symptoms of ADHD if we want to try and kind of kill two birds with one stone. Another important part of our overall medication management strategy for people with ADHD is to make sure that we are treating what we call co-occurring disorders as well as the ADHD. So if people struggle with things like depression or anxiety, bipolar disorder, in addition to their ADHD, then we really wanna make sure that we're actually taking care of those conditions as well, because any kind of psychiatric condition can make your ADHD symptoms actually look worse. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. If you're dealing with really bad depression or anxiety, you're not gonna be able to focus as well. You're just not gonna have the energy or the mental space to be able to focus and deal with some of your ADHD symptoms as you normally would. So in future videos, we'll talk about the other really important parts of ADHD treatment. We'll talk about lifestyle changes and different strategies and therapy that we can use to treat ADHD. But for now, let me know in the comments if there are other topics you'd like me to cover. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.